All right, so we are live and we are recording this. Good, all systems are go. So Curtis, this is, uh, you know, as we wait for people to file in here and we, we prepare to start our discussion, you should know that you are the very first guest for this show, for this Pixel Whoa. Punisher show. Yeah, so this is a this is the first photo focused, photo focused, that's a, that should be a term photo focused right so this is the, should be the name of the show <laughs> it should be the name of the show we will change it, we will change it. but this is the this is uh, this is a photo focused show uh and the title of the show is called pixel punisher which is a term that i came up with man literally i think it's been over 10 years i've been calling photographers and specifically compositing artists pixel yeah. punishers you know wow. so people that yeah, because it the, and where that came from, and we're just we'll just chit chat while people file in. Mm -hmm. Where that came from was the whole Pixel Punisher name came from this argument we were having on my show this week in photo about it wasn't an argument; it was more of a dialogue about mm -hmm. the uh, the the idea that what I call purist photographers have around the manipulation and the purity of pixels right mm -hmm. so which is a holdover from the still photography world where you get it get it right on the negative or the slide film and then you go from there right, right and right. Uh, yeah and if you're if you can't get it right there then you're somehow less than a photographer mm -hmm. and this this argument came from the quote new breed at least back then of photographer that were experimenting with compositing and doing all this cool stuff and where's the line between the purest photographer and the person that looks at pixels as uh, raw material for yeah. a, a work that will be completed at some point in the future. So uh. I'm on the other side. I'm on the pixel punisher side. I'm on the, <laughs> I, I would, I would say pixel punisher and I would say pixels were born to be punished. Right. So they are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're raw materials. They're like I've never concrete. thought of it this way at all. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, I, have, I have lots of friends that, that look at the world that way. They travel all over the place and they'll hey look at that sky let me grab that i may want to use it one day you know grab a sky or a texture or whatever right. and then bring it all together into a later composition which is no has no less merit than if that situation presented itself and they took the picture so i don't know it's an wow. argument we that's that's it. pretty I'm deep <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty deep i was i I was wondering what pixel punisher meant. I was like, I didn't expect. Yes, that. that's yeah, what pixel that's punisher heavy. means. I love it. Yeah, I pixel punisher it. means pixels were born to be punished, and pixels yeah. are raw materials for we as content creators to do with what we want, right? So yeah. we we can create stuff, and I, the the ethos of that is more of we don't the the it's okay to have to place art, artificial limitations on yourself. Like you say, mm -hmm. you know, I must get it right in camera. I'm only going to shoot JPEG, no raw. Cause I don't want to, I don't want to adjust the image later. <laughs> this is the way I, that I feel like shooting because it makes mm -hmm. me feel better. This is the box of constraints I want to put myself in, yeah. which is hundred percent valid. But my argument is it's also valid to think the other way where, mm -hmm. you know, I want to, I want to mash pixels and use Photoshop and do all kinds of cool stuff with my yeah. image and make it better than what I saw with mine own two eyes. <laughs> yeah, it's all about just what works for the artist because everyone has their own process and their own imagination. So yeah, that's yep. that's yep. really all it is. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, there, now you know. And now we know, <laughs> folks that are watching this and filing into the uh, into the webinar room, you understand what the title of the, the show is, Pixel Punisher, and our very first guest here, Curtis Saunders. So Curtis, I'm going to, let's go ahead and get wow. started here. Are you ready to go? I'm excited to, to I'm dive ready. into this hour. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. All right. All right. Well, cool. Well, welcome, folks, to this webinar. My name is Frederick Van Johnson. I'm your host today of this very first inaugural episode of the Pixel Punisher Show on the Photo Focus uh, property. Uh, my first guest that I have the honor of speaking with is this guy here, Mr. Kurt Saunders. So we're going to talk about his work. We're going to talk about how he got started in photography. We're also going to talk about his inception into Adobe's Rising Stars program and how that happened and how can I get in that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're going to talk about all that in this in this hour. We have about an hour to go through all this. It's going to go fast. And folks that are watching this, you should know Curtis and I did a pre-interview yesterday where we kind of talked about what we'd be talking about. And he said something that most guests, I don't think any guests 
over the years has asked me and he said, hey, would it be okay if I asked you some questions <laughs> as well? And I was like, sure, why not? So we're yeah. gonna make this a dialogue conversation between the, the two of us, two-way conversation and, yeah. uh, and see where we end up at the end of the hour. So Kurt, welcome to the show, man. How's it going? Wow, I, thank you. I'm, I'm so honored to be here. I didn't know I was the first guest. This is also my first interview or anything like this. So it's just like, there's a lot of firsts happening. I just feel really uh, humbled and, and honored to be here. So I just feel really good. I'm excited. Okay, cool, cool. Well, yeah, yeah a lot of firsts. This is our first time talking in quote yeah. person, right? We talked mm -hmm. on the phone or, yeah. or audio. Yeah, it was the phone. It was, I yeah. Was yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So this is good, man. Let's let's dive right in. Let's start with just a little bit of history on on who Kurt Saunders is. Where Where are you? on the globe and just give us your your i like to call it your your spider-man radioactive story radioactive Ooh. spider story like okay. how did you get started <laughs> in this this crazy world of photography well like spider-man i'm from new york city uh from brooklyn originally not queens but brooklyn um uh my my family is jamaican and so pretty much everyone emigrated here to to brooklyn and um for me, I, I I grew up just very, my, in my childhood, I just remember being very imaginative, just like looking at images and colors and just feeling them very deeply, just feeling very connected. Like I didn't talk a lot as a kid. I'm an only child, so I was very shy, but I was just like very, very into just colors and art and just images. So I didn't know or have an idea where that would take me, but my dad was a, he wasn't a photographer, but he just loved taking photos um, on film. So I used to just, he used to take the, f the film to get processed in the lab and everything. I used to go with him. And I was just fascinated by the process and I would just look at the pictures and they weren't like professional pictures or anything. It was just us, family, whatever he would be doing. And um, from there, I just developed a love of images. So, uh, I don't know how, how far you want me to go with this this answer. No, that that is no that's that's perfect. So the, yeah. the you know we so when that when that sort of and I see that here like with my daughter I see like yesterday she was setting up her iPad doing videos of herself right because yeah. she's because she's yeah. me doing it. Do you feel like how much of an influence was that? Was that was that more of just like setting your you know, your vector and applying some thrust to it. Like, okay, I know I want to do something creative because I saw this guy that I really admire doing this thing. Or do you think it was something more internal? Like you're just driven because of a DNA factor. What, what do you think? I think it was internal um, because I, I didn't really know what I wanted to be. Like, I think my generic answer was like, I'll be a doctor when I grow up. But I, I don't know if I would like really felt passionate about like medicine, but like, I, I always felt there was something that always always had me gravitate toward anything creative music art um paintings you know whatever it was so when i think i just picked up on it as my dad would take pictures and i would look at pictures um as i got older i, I started to realize that even seeing pictures from before my time like old old family photos i'm like this is in some way it's communication it's like mm -hmm. i can connect to this one moment in time that maybe I would I didn't witness, but in this present moment, I can almost like time travel to this. I can I can like time travel to this moment that I never would have seen with my my own two eyes. So once I started to think about that more, um, I would take photos for fun. But just as I started to think about that communication element, I'm just like, oh, that could be impactful. So maybe I could do something in that lane. So I think I just kind of internally was driven towards the creativity world it's so interesting that 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 is that mirrors a lot of what i think today about photography in terms of the the camera itself is a time machine in a lot yeah. of ways right yeah. In, it, yeah. in a couple of ways and I, I i actually did a course um on this week in photo.com called the time traveling photographer mm. and the what that what that kind of goes into is all the different ways that we can use our cameras to manipulate time. Rich Harrington and I did an event last night where we were talking about this long exposures and and uh, time lapse photography and those kinds of things where you can stretch time and compress time or mm -hmm. even with cinemagraphs release 
parts of the time, you know, yeah. and freeze everything except this part of time, yeah. you know, all those kinds of things. And it all comes back to the camera and as a photographer, understanding light. And that's what got me. That was my radioactive spider because mm. as a nerd kid, I was like, man, you know, I was, I remember being depressed initially. Tell me if you, if you, if this resonates with you, I remember being a little bit depressed learning about the speed of light and how far things are away from us, you know, in the, yeah. in the galaxy yeah. and how Star Trek and all those time travel, you know, warp speed type technologies were complete fiction because you cannot get to the speed of light, period. Yeah. And even if you could, it would still take you 150 years to get to the nearest star. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so all that, I don't know, I'm thinking like, okay, then how does this work on within cameras and how can you manipulate that? So once you understand mm. how fast light is going and how it behaves and the properties of it and what the camera is actually doing with f-stop shutter speeds and ISOs, then you can start, okay, but what if I do this? Oh, wait, yeah. then there's Photoshop. I can take it in there. And then After Effects, I can do all this crazy stuff with the appearance of that scene afterwards. Right. So how 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 do you play in that world? Like the, and I want to dive into your, you know, the the Adobe stuff, you know, a little bit yeah. in a second here. But sure. how does the where do you fall on the whole Pixel Punisher argument? You know, mm. of pixels are pure and they should be maintained. Get it right in camera or go home <laughs> or the other side, which is. I got what I wanted out of this scene. I'm going to harvest it later to make something better or more than the sum of its parts. What, what do you What do you think? That's such a great question. I, I feel like I am somewhere in the middle, to be honest. Like, mm -hmm. I think the first thing for me is the feeling. So I I'm always feeling first. So if something feels good about an image to me, like I'll I'll feel it, and. I want to get it right as I'm shooting, of course, but I also feel like if I can do something to it later that can even just like put an exclamation part on an exclamation point on this feeling even more, then it's like I'll do that. I'll, I'll have that be a part of my creative process. So yeah. it's kind of both for me. It's like as long as I'm for me, the, the desired result is the feeling. So it's like as long as I can capture the feeling of either what I felt as I was shooting it, what I felt in the moment, or as I felt seeing the image in camera, um, then it's like, if I can elevate this feeling and just like really drive it home, then yeah. that's kind of where I, that's kind of where I focus more. I feel like if I get, if I get too caught up um, with the numbers and like thinking about the speed of things and like, I, I might just be in my head too much. I just might just yeah. be like, oh, I don't know. I think there's just so yeah. much pressure. I'm just like, all right, let me just go with the flow and see how this feels to me. And like, what what can I do with that feeling? That's that's really where I land. <laughs> and that's perfect. You know, and that's, yeah. that's, part, that's the argument, right? My, my argument it is there is no argument. There is no yeah. spoon, right? <laughs> because, mm, yeah. because it's photography is ethereal and is what it is what we as people that are wielding the camera want to make of it. Right. So there shouldn't be, in my opinion, this is I should preface everything in my opinion. <laughs> in my opinion, there shouldn't be these these artificial blanket constraints on photographers. Even the mm. rules within photography, like the rule of thirds and composition right. and Rembrandt lighting and all these different things, those aren't rules. Those are suggestions that somebody yeah. figured out, right? So they're just, these are suggestions, not rules. And the whole art and science of photography is the power, the thing that powers it is you as the artist. Mm -hmm. and what your desires are and like you say you want to illustrate emotion and kind of capture that emotional feeling in the frame that's 110 percent great and if the next person says no i don't really care about the emotion i care about the color red and all my shots have to have the color yeah. red in them or they're not real photographs right so, yeah so yeah that person is valid as well where yeah. we get into trouble i think is when if i swing in and say Hey, Kurt, your photography you know, and your methodology is flawed because it doesn't match up with my methodology. Mm -hmm. Then, then that's when I have a problem with it. You know, exactly. Live and let yeah. live as as an artist. So, Kurt, Kurt, that said, with your with all that, what what genre of photography do you enjoy most? Where do you play? Mm. I think um, I started I started portrait. Well, I started doing different things, but I think once I, I started taking portraits, I, I felt really connected to it because it's, again, it's like that feeling. It's like, what is this person saying without 
without you actually hearing their voice like what is this what is this this setting and what is this clothing saying without you know what are the the colors in the images with a person in it like what is that saying without words and so that that was just really fascinating to me because sometimes it feels like things that how i feel about just life generally is that sometimes things that are overstated tend to can almost lose its value in a sense like yeah it won't maybe won't lose its value but it's just like i'd rather present it and then you get your own message from it so that's kind of how that's my approach to portraiture and i think um so portraiture is the center and i think fashion also comes in there a bit um i just really enjoy fashion and i feel like it's it's communication it's it's all communication like like i like i said earlier so just seeing where the worlds how they communicate with each other how a person can communicate with what they're wearing or you know how a person can communicate to the viewer you know what they're what they're saying with what they're wearing or if they're not saying anything it's just more so about creating a beautiful image i, I like i said i'm always chasing the feeling first so yeah i feel like fashion is just one of those elements that you can add something that can bring a feeling like so it, it can be layers to it you can think oh this is a beautiful person or this is a beautiful item of clothing or this is something but this is i think all the elements combined it's like a it's like a good it's like a good uh stew or a good you know soup yeah <laughs> so that's story. kind of my approach yeah it's a story right yeah yeah you, yeah, you hit it right on the head because i i am the same exact if you were to ask me that question i would respond the same way that you responded you know okay, I love wow, yeah portraiture uh fashion taking pictures of models and just that idea and it, tell me if this resonates with you because when i when i think of portraiture let's take that mm -hmm. one so when you when you take a take look at portraiture if for me, I feel like, again, back to that time machine metaphor, it feels like you're capturing a slice of time of that person that they mm -hmm. won't even be in an hour from now. Like, say it's a, you know, uh, an attractive person, that yeah. beauty and that attractiveness is going to fade over time. And you're ca capturing them at this point on their timeline. And whatever you do in post processing or composition or lighting and all that plays into that really important segment of time where that person is. And we've seen illustrations of it where people say, you know, I, I, I had some calamity happen in my family and we only have these pictures of grandpa left. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Those slices of time or the person that has fading beauty for whatever reason they look, whether it be aging or something else, they look back at the photo that you took and made them look amazing. Mm -hmm. And it suddenly becomes invaluable. And I, people ask, you know, well, what about landscape photography and all that? And I'm curious what you think about this as well. And for me, as somebody who likes taking pictures of people, mm -hmm. I look at, I love landscape photography, but I would not ever put that on my, yeah. you know, anything, yeah. right? Yeah. Because yeah. I know how to, I know how light behaves. I know how to compose a decent landscape shot, but it's not what gets me excited. And I think the part of it is that time machine thing. I feel like the earth has been around for depending on what what uh, philosophies you subscribe to mm -hmm. 4.3 billion years right and it's been going around the sun all this time so there's not a whole lot of different landscape shots i feel that weren't <laughs> there you yeah. know yet the post-processing notwithstanding and seasons and all that but for me like I, I live in the bay area the san francisco bay area a shot of the golden gate bridge probably not going to get anything that unique of that. But if I shoot a model in front of the Golden Gate Bridge, that suddenly changes it and it becomes more important to that model. And that model, if if they like the photo is going to say, wow, yeah. look at me, I look great. That bridge is never going to tell me that, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So when you're when you're shooting, when you're doing fashion portraiture type work, take me take me through a day in the life of kurt like how do you you have a shoot you've booked a model or your client has booked a model and you're yeah. you're set to go do, like i'm trying to see if there's parallels in me like the night before mm -hmm. the shoot so you got to shoot and it's start your start time is 10 o'clock yeah what's happening the night before what do you do oh man the night before i think <laughs> I think I usually just try to rest. I think that's I think that's my thing. I think I just need to because if I 
I don't like to do anything tired or hungry. <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah. like, I got to be in a, in a good frame of mind and a good frame of body. I just don't want anything getting in the way of like, oh, I wasn't, you know, in the best position for, for myself. So it's just like, if I just want to bring my best self to the shoot. I think that's, that's the thing I'm thinking about the most. And I'm thinking about, man, I, I, if, if I could go back to what you were just saying, um, sure. because that resonated so deeply, like, uh, it, I, I think one thing in my approach to photography is consideration, like considering what it means to photograph someone at this particular time in their life, in the world, and just what it might mean in the future. And it's like, I feel like with Instagram and just like social media and just things are so quick and accessible that we can see something and forget about it in the next second. Like we just scroll and the image is gone. But for me, it's like when I'm photographing someone, like if I'm photographing someone who's 25 years old right now and it's in the middle of a global pandemic, like these are, these are some of the things that just like, if this person looks back five years from now, they'd be like, dang, do you remember that time? Like, do you remember I was 25? I was like, I looked this way. I probably, I probably look a little different now, or maybe I look the same, who knows, but like just these different things and just thinking about how much photography can capture in that moment. It was something I have, I have a few images where I was taking photos of, it's like women would have like longer braids. And so they do like these hair flips and I, I take images of that. And so there's one, there's a few in particular that, um, they just stand out to me because it's like, I took them kind of on the street, like, you know, on a sidewalk somewhere, not in a studio. So it's like that moment happened so quickly. Like if you were driving by, you probably could have seen it or missed it or walking by, you could have missed that moment. But like with the image, you can see that forever. Like that you can think like, well, this, this is just what happened. You know, like this yeah. is what this person looked like, but yeah. it was such a brief moment that, you know, you had to capture it. And uh, so, those are some of the things I think about before I'm shooting and as I'm shooting, just like, uh, just what it means to, what it means to be us in this moment, what it means to look how we look, how to feel, how we feel, be in the, in this time in the world. And, 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 and yeah, just, just all of those things are, are really important to me. I think about that a lot as I'm, as I'm photographing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I wonder about that too. Cause you know, you know, like we're in, I don't know this. I think this happens to everybody. Like certain certain songs or sounds or smells will imprint on you on in, oh, yeah. on a situation. Like I do, I do. Uh, like daily, I go on on these marathon walks, like ten k. You know, yeah, just go out walking okay. and listen to <laughs> audiobooks and podcasts and all that stuff. Yeah. And it's so weird because when if so, like say I'm listening to some marketing audiobook or something, and I something I'm walking by a location that is kind of interesting, like there's a red house or something. The next time I drive by that red house, even though I was walking the first time, next time I see that red house, I'm gonna remember what I was listening to right. at that spot. And you know, Absolutely. almost like music, you know, like yeah. this song, man, this reminds me of my ex-girlfriend, whatever. You know, <laughs> it's it's those kind of imprints. I wonder, do you think that applies to photography as well? Not, not from a from a viewer standpoint, but from the artist, from you, from you as a photographer, does do your feelings and what you're doing and you know, your emotional state at the time, does that get channeled into that frame that you're snapping? So then later, again, back to the time machine metaphor, yeah. later you look at that photo and you're transported back there and whether you were feeling, man, I was mad that day, or, <laughs> you know, do you see that when you feel, feel and see that when you look at the photo, is that emotion captured in there for you? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. It's uh, because that's, going back to what I was saying as a kid, like that's the effect that the things I would see would have on me. So it's like, even now when I, when I, when I visit places or go past places that I was as a kid, like sometimes I'll even like drive past the, the house I grew up in, I'll still have those same feelings. So it's like, feelings really matter to me. <laughs> yeah. I'm really all about the feelings. So it's like, cool. when I see my work, when I see my own work, um, I'm hardly, I, I look at it, of course, from a technical standpoint, you want it to be looking good, <laughs> but it's like, I'm always thinking about where I was and what it felt like to shoot that, where it was, 
what it was what that day was like and what, what what that time was like in my life what what this person brought to the shoot or what this moment brought to the shoot like those things really do matter to me it's definitely a time machine and I, I think that's that communication element that I hope that viewers the p- people people who view the photos can see like if if because like I said things are so forgettable now so it's just like I hope to create something that lasts so that's kind of my my approach yeah yeah it's yeah. interesting Thing, things are so forgettable but also permanent right because uh-huh. we have the the fleetingness of like you know a, a never-ending instagram roll or snapchat whatever that goes away over time yeah but then if you say something bad it's going to be recorded oh, yeah. and it's totally. going to come bite you 10 years later <laughs> so yeah. that stuff that oh, stuff yeah. stays around but the photos Absolutely. don't stay around. Yeah, it's so it's so interesting. Um, you know, Kurt, I want to I want to switch to responsibility here. Sure. So, and for, and I ask a lot of photographers this, and the the idea is that, and there's no what there's one no one right answer to this at all. It's completely subjective. Do photographers, regardless of their their chosen genre or genres, do they have a social responsibility to? document what's going on in the world today around them. You know, I asked this to another photographer who's a, I think she's a street photographer in, in Los Angeles. And she was talking about, this was a couple of months ago, she was talking about her experiences um, in LA during a pandemic, which was a, a hot spot, you know, for the yeah. for COVID-19. Um, plus there were both left and right demonstrations going on there politically, mm-hmm. Trump rallies and, you know, non-Trump rallies going on. And she was Switzerland taking photos at both, right? Mm. So my question to her, and then I repose it to you was, as a photographer, is there or isn't there a implied social responsibility because you are a person that captures, you got that time machine and you capture moments in time when there's something significant happened happening do people around you kind of put that weight on you like hey you're a photographer you need to go take pictures of that protest over there oh (laughs) you're a photographer there's an accident over there go take pictures of it right do you feel like you know a superhero that feels like okay i gotta go out and save the world again yeah this is such a big question um i I, whenever i think about this question i think about i believe it was like nina simone who said uh you know the artist's duty is to reflect the times Mm -hmm. um and I I agree with that. I, I I feel though that there's not one particular way to do it, um, and I think that's that's sometimes the pressure that gets put on artists um, of any genre or any or any medium. I feel like um, if you want to say something about race or politics or gender, like you have to do it in this. It, sometimes the pressure is like you have to do it in this direct or this this absolute way, and it's just like. Right you know, the, I feel like there is, there's enough room for artists to be themselves. And mm-hmm. if they are being affected, if they are caring and concerned about what's going on in the world, um, that they, that their voice, their unique voice um, can, can speak to that in the way that fits them best. And yeah. may not, it may not be the conventional ways. Like for me, I, I can't say that I like if there's a protest happening, I will definitely be tuned in and paying attention. I can't say that my first instinct will be go shoot that protest. Yeah. Um, but I will think about like, how do I tell this story still? Like, how do I still find ways to include this in part of what I want to create and what I want to say about this creatively? Um, that just works best for me. And so I think it's just about finding what works best for each artist i I feel like the responsibility is there in some regard um but it's it's subjective to who the artist is yeah no a hundred percent i hundred percent agree with that and it's it's yeah it reminds me of that other conversation i had because we were we were kind of talking about the and she was african-american too so we were we were talking about the the weight that certain groups get put on them when something that affects that group is going down, yeah. right? Yeah. Especially as a photographer. So the expectation is 
if there's a protest or a Black Lives Matter or whatever, something happening that directly impacts you as a photographer, mm -hmm. then you are somehow duty bound to go cover that as a photographer. Yeah. But you're like, I'm just a portrait fashion <laughs> person. I don't, you know, yeah. you know I'm, I'm interested of in watching news, but do I have really have to go, you know, or I exactly. may go participate. Right. You know, I can go participate in that. Do I have to bring my camera? Right. Right. So, right. You know, it, it's interesting how that, how the, and it, it's not, you know, it's all groups that yeah. whatever happens that affects that group, if you're a member of that group, the gravity suddenly gets stronger for you and the expectation for you to go in and actually interact at, with your camera and take yeah. pictures of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, that's interesting. So switching, switching gears a little bit, Kerr, I want to talk about, um, the Adobe Rising Stars. Yeah. So tell me about that. So Adobe has this Rising Stars thing where they, this is where I know they have handpicked uh, a couple of very few people to participate in this Rising Stars program. You are one of them. So yeah. what does it mean? What does it mean to be an Adobe Rising Star? Wow. Well, <laughs> it means a lot. It means the world. I mean, I, and I, I I can joke and say I'm not getting paid to say this, but <laughs> like I use Adobe just naturally. That was kind of what I would natu that was my natural tool to pick up. So um, I I have always edited in Lightroom. So um, that has it, it. It's funny when you work with a company and then the company wants to work with you. It's like yeah. oh wow, let's do that handshake. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> to be a rising star, I mean. I, it's one of those things that it's like I said, when we were talking about the the numbers and the, the, the speed of things, it's like, if I think about it too much, I might just become overwhelmed because I can't think, you know, there are, um, there are millions of photographers in the world that could have been chosen for this opportunity. I don't know why it was me, but like, I, I, instead of like thinking on that, um, I just, just take it as an honor. Um, and just take it as a sign that I'm doing the right thing. Like photography and being a creative isn't always a conventional choice. You know, it's like, it's like you want to do something very, especially coming from I, growing up in a Caribbean culture, like it's always like do something very technical that'll, you know, feed, feed your family, put, get the bills paid, put food on the table. And sometimes, you know, especially as a freelancer, it's not always that easy. So it's like to choose a path of creativity and, and to choose a path that's unconventional and to have people from all over the world see your work and say, hey, I see something in there that is special or different or that stands out. Um, I just take it as I'm doing the right thing. I'm, I'm where I'm supposed to be. So that's just what it means to me. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That is really cool. Congratulations on that because it is thank you. It's really good to see. And and don't don't sell yourself short. It's well deserved. <laughs> you know, there may be millions of photographers out there, but there's only one Kurt Saunders, right? So yeah. <laughs> so, so there <laughs> thank we go. You. I appreciate yeah. That. Yeah. So from a from a brass tax standpoint, like the being included in that program, the Adobe mm -hmm. Rising Stars program, what what does that give you? You know, obviously they're gonna highlight you on the on Adobe, right? Yeah. And what else? What what else does it mean? Yeah, I I believe. Well, it's just opportunities like this to mm -hmm. like you know people for us to meet and people like ourselves that are like minded and to have community. And I think that's yeah. something that um, I've been able to see uh, with Adobe that you know people are able to rally around what you do and 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 support you. And I think that that's been that's been a, a really big a really big part of this is just seeing the support, like getting opportunities to have my work, uh, you know, whether it's featured in Lightroom for like to show my process or to talk about my process and to like, uh, you know, have kind of a spotlight be put on what I do, but also to have other people's support and we can all learn from each other and learn how to improve. I think um, that's 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 been my biggest takeaway from this experience thus far. So yeah, I'm just honored. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. So, so Kim, continuing that line of questioning, this is this isn't a, a, a <laughs> uh, you know, I, I don't I'm not putting you on the spot, but I'm curious yeah. about the 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 workflow behind all that, right? Okay. So, fashion, portraiture, Lightroom, Photoshop. There's a yeah. myriad of tools out there that that you could choose. Um, I also agree that 
Adobe is kind of the operating system for creative professionals, right? Yeah. It's, you know, it's the public utility that <laughs> just works, right? And does more than what you need it to do all the time. So mm -hmm. why not mm -hmm. invest in the in the standard? So uh, with that said, what is it? What does your workflow look like? So you return back from that shoot that you're well rested on. So you <laughs> return. Hopefully you re you rested your batteries too, and your batteries are charged and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Memory cards are formatted. So <laughs> with that, you know, when you when you come back from the shoot, and you you're like, oh man, I got I got I can't wait to look at these images. Those came out great. You know, like the yeah. images of the braids being flicked and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. do you? What does that look like? You import them in, and then you start the culling process. I'm assuming in Lightroom or yes. how, how does it go? What is your, what's your workflow? Oh, that's exactly it. Yeah. I, I um, upload the photos to Lightroom and, and then I start working immediately on, yeah, I, I think I, I go with color first. I think, well, I think I, I always choose the images that stand out to me first and then um, uh, see how I can express the colors as, as well as possible. Um, it's hard to really put into words my, what my philosophy on color is like it's just like but I know it when I see it so like again chasing that feeling and so like I I, um, I, I kind of do a thing where I create my own presets in Lightroom just to like start with start from scratch and then see like how can I build um, how can I how can I build the image to look like how I'm really seeing it and how as close to life as possible but to also bring out the best in it um, and especially like I shoot with, uh, I'd say my work predominantly features black people or people of color. So it's like, mm -hmm. you want to honor their skin tone. You know, you want to honor what they, what they're wearing. You want to honor the light that, that is on them. So it's like, think, I think about those things as I process through Lightroom and, and, and um, yeah, it, I'm appreciative of how easy Lightroom is like to use. Like for me, I, I just, yeah, it, it's always been, it, I've never had a really hard time like finding or getting to what I need because I feel like it's, the solutions are there. It's just about having a desired outcome um, in my mind and in my heart and what I feel. So just like following that and, and knowing that like, okay, I think I have it here. And so yeah. seeing how I can apply that to all the images that I've chosen, so. I love that. I love yeah. that. You know, it's it's interesting that the um, that you br you brought up skin tone because we've that's been a topic of conversation with a yeah. couple of photographers over the past year or so. With it, interestingly, you know, only the past year or so, but it's <laughs> just 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 the discussion around how do you accurately what is correct? You know, especially yeah. with you know with black skin, brown skin, beige skin you know, there's no such thing as white skin, you know, it's all yeah. just shades of shades of melanin in there. But you know, the with the different shades and the different ethnicities, you know, how as a, in there, I, I don't know if there's even a way to, to target this. But yeah. how do you make sure that you're getting an, an accurate representation of that person's skin tone? And I'll, I'll put that in the there's there's, there's subjectivity around it. For yeah. me, like when you look at somebody and you kind of intuit what they look like right yeah, so yeah, you yeah. can't control that but then there's also the science behind it of the number of rods and cones we all have in our eyes and how we mm -hmm. all interpret colors differently right? right and some people may be colorblind to certain colors they don't even know it so their purple <laughs> is actually blue and they don't you yeah. know so how do you when you're chasing that horizon <laughs> right mm -hmm. how do you accurately represent something especially in fashion yeah, that's that's a really it's a challenge. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. Um, sorry, <clears throat> uh, mm -hmm. it's it's a challenge. I, I I think the thing that I think about is I would say earlier on in my in my editing journey, I would kind of just focus on an overall image and 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 like I throw presets on there and throw whatever. But then I'd have to stop and say, like, does this person look like this? You know, <laughs> right. like, is this what they look like? So I think it's just that I think it it sounds that simple. But for me, I, I kind of simplify it. Like, does the person actually look like this? And it can get technical because it's like sometimes skin tone can can skew reddish or yellowish or, you know, so it, it does get tricky. So but it's yeah. just like. For me, it's like as close as possible, just like, what does this person look like? 
So sometimes that just takes, you know, seeing the person before you even take their image, before you even take their photograph, you know, just like getting a sense of what they actually look like and also like kind of like what they express as a, as a person to you um, uh, just on an energetic level, just like what is what colors feel like this person that's that's something yeah. i think about so like and i feel like once i'm i'm kind of approaching it from that standpoint i i try to get as close to that as possible so um it does i you know it does i have a friend um andre laroe who works for the w as well he he does a lot of great work around this he has, he has like comprehensive courses and it's something he definitely thinks deeply about so um, I'd say if for photographers who may want to uh, know more about that, please check his work out. But um, cool. um, it, it's it's a challenge, but I think it's always just about thinking about what does this person actually look like? And am I seeing them for what they what they really look like and who they are? So and that's a that's a subjectivity side. Yeah. Of it. What was what was that artist's name again? Just so we can make sure we capture that. Uh, his name is uh, his name is Andre Leroux. If if you want, I can type it here in the chat. Um, yeah, put it in the chat for us. And while while yeah. you put in that, the, the here so that's subject is subjective, right? Look and and make and seeing the person to make sure you see them, and then capturing the image, which I completely agree with. The other side of that is um, science, right? <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. here here's an example, and just being technically competent at your at your art. I remember many moons ago when I was experimenting and I thought I wanted to shoot weddings mm. and I was doing I was doing an engagement shoot in Santa Barbara California no no it was um, Santa Monica on the beach yeah and uh it happened to be of this extremely almost impossibly black Nigerian guy dark skin we yeah we would call him blue black right it was just yeah dark dark right and his fiance was this Scandinavian you know, melanin challenged, redhead, <laughs> you know, can't yeah. stay, you know, can't be in the sun more than five minutes or she burst into flames. So it was, it was, and that was on the beach. So dark, dark, light, light on a sunlit beach. Yeah. How do you capture, you know, and then, you know, for the, for the bonus round on light colored tan sand in California. Right. So how yeah. do you, and once you get that shot out, like, how do you process it? Who do you, you know, so, yeah. That's 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 a technical challenge that goes along with with the physic with the with the interpretive challenge of making sure that you saw them like you said and you have that okay this is what they really look like let me match that once you got that whack a mole down it's okay now I got to figure out how to make them both look you know yeah. true true to life in the same frame so, so wait yeah, question for question for you yeah um, do you feel like you can over edit a photo. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. You can edit. You can over edit a photo. And what I say is, in this genre, if in you know portraiture fashion, more so on the portraiture side, if if it's kind of like a if people know that you've been there, it's like plastic surgery. Mm. If people know that you've been there and they can tell that this photo has been edited, it doesn't look natural. Then you failed yeah. as an artist, unless right. that's the intent. You know, it's a composite right. or something fantastical. Yeah. Then okay, yeah, okay, this is clearly manipulated, but if it's if it's trying to represent reality and they can see that it doesn't, kind of like a movie with special effects and you can see, oh, that was just a green screen. I can still see some green or whatever. You know, yeah. if it's if you if you pushing it to that level and you make skin look unnaturally plastic and flawless or teeth are too bright, nobody's teeth are that white or their <laughs> eye irises look like vampires or something. Yeah. You know, all that needs to be toned back. So as a as a artist, my opinion is if you if people if you get the compliment and somebody looks at one of your your shots, Kurt, and they are like, "Man, you did a really good job retouching her. This is fantastic." I think you failed, right? Because it shouldn't right. be about the retouching, and they should just think, "Wow, this is just a great shot. This person looks amazing," yeah. right? So that's that's my answer. Like, if yeah, you, yeah, you've gone too far if people know you've been there. <laughs> so. Mm, that's a great yeah. that's a great answer yeah 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 so photoshop photoshop is the is supposed to be the hidden weapon it's our hidden tool mm -hmm. that we make thing make reality better on the back end if people can look behind the wizard of oz curtain and see the mm -hmm. little man back there pulling things <laughs> and the wizard has failed you know you gotta yeah. keep that illusion keep that Absolutely. illusion up. yeah uh 
wow, we got 15 minutes left. What does what does gear look like on your side? You're going out on that fashion shoot. What do you, yeah. what's in your camera bag? Okay, uh, I can show you. I have. Yeah, uh, I want to see it. Okay, so on the digital side of things, this is what I I shoot with. This is a Canon EOS RP. It's a mirrorless. Uh, before this, I was shooting uh, with the 5D Mark II, but um, and this guy, this guy, the Nifty 50, the 50 1.8. This is my this is my real only lens. Like this is this is like yeah. That's I shoot, awesome. That's the I shoot only everything lens. with this. Pretty much. Like I have like a 28, uh, but like I mostly use this. So this is the the lens I had I've had since like 2014. Um wow. so that's my that's digital. so good. Um I shoot some film. Uh I shoot 35 millimeters sometimes, but I also shoot medium format. And I shoot that with this big guy. <laughs> The Mamiya oh, the RB. Mamiya. Oh, I used to 67. love that camera. Is that it's, an RB? That's an RB. Yeah, this is an RB. Yeah, it's really big and very heavy, oh. <laughs> but this gets great shots. So that's my that's my film. I haven't shot film in a little bit, um, but that's my weapon of choice. <laughs> I'm so nostalgic for that camera. I used to shoot that camera every day in the studio when I was yeah. in the military. I oh, used wow. to shoot that. Yeah, I used to shoot that camera. Uh, the RB67. I think we got in an RZ67 that the older, more experienced photographers got. And I got mm -hmm. to use the RB67, which I was happy with because I loved it. Yeah. Um, but then we also had Bronica. You know, we used to okay, shoot yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Bronicas as well. So yeah, wow, that, that is really cool. <laughs> so, yeah. okay. So here, here's the ultimate test, Mr. Okay. Film Shooter. Okay. Are you processing and printing your own film or is <laughs> Not yet, not yet. I, I, I will get there, but I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that is cool. I did not expect you to pull out that RB67. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's usually, everyone has a reaction to it, yeah. Yeah, well, that means like, if you go out with that thing, you are on a giant tripod. I remember the, the tripod I had for mine was a, was an old school, I think it was like an old school video tripod that had wood legs you know oh, it, it seriously looked like you were supposed to hold up a bird or something right it was it was that kind of tripod and it I've just never worked with that rb i've never used yeah. a tripod on it no tripod just fives <laughs> you've never used a tripod with rb67 i wow. just look into it <laughs> <laughs> we gotta hang i want to see you yeah. shoot. I <laughs> <laughs> Next time I come to New York, we're gonna go go shooting. That's, I love that. Crazy. Yeah, I love that. That is that is so cool. So, <laughs> like film and processing, none of that stuff is cheap. Is I mean, it's no. not cheap if you're doing it yourself. I mean, yeah. you, you would think it's cheaper, but it's the investment of time and space and all that other stuff to do it. Yeah, yeah. But when you're not, you're paying for that. What is it? Like go popping between digital mirrorless when mm -hmm. you have instant gratification on the back of the camera yeah. to you know medium format where <laughs> you take that roll out and you send it off and it comes back. Yeah, you know how does how isn't that like a, a disconnect there for you or are you just fluid between the two worlds? I am. I'm fluid between the two worlds. So it kind of goes back to that 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 question you asked about the the pix the pixels about like you know. Yeah. Do you want to get it right in shot or do you want to work after? So I think with film, you absolutely want to get it right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like with film, I started with digital. So with film, I just always love film. I, I don't want to say more, but like I've just always loved the feeling of film. Like I've always talked, I've been talking about feeling all day. So I just love how film photos feel. And I knew once I started to understand medium format, I um I just knew that it would take a different level of discipline for me to shoot. So even when I'm shooting digital, not to just like press, 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 like think about what I'm shooting, think about this frame, think about, you know, think about like, if this was my one shot to get this shot right, especially with medium format, you get this guy, it only gets like 10 shots. So it's like yeah. 10 shots per roll. So it's like with these 10 shots, what's the most I can make of it? So yeah. it's definitely just a lot of discipline and with digital, there's just more flexibility, you know, but like, I think just just learning how to apply one to the other is how I work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because in the end, light is the same, right? Like, yeah, you light the light that behaves a certain way today is going to behave that exact same way tomorrow. It's different, exactly. different qualities, but none of the physics of of f stop 
ISO shutter speed change between medium format and right. anything else, right? It's all, yeah. once you understand that stuff, you understand it all. But, yeah. you know, I'm curious, that's true. None of the physics change of light mm -hmm. or properties of light change, but your your brain changes, you know? And I'm, I'm thinking, going back to the world of, of medium format when I was shooting that, I remember every shot, like you said, being considered, right? Because mm -hmm. I was in a studio on a tripod situation, literally had a mechanical shutter release, <laughs> the whole nine yards yeah. with that camera. So it was, okay, before the before the subject shows, shows up, let's meet her, make sure everything is perfect. Mm -hmm. The stool's in the right spot, the background's on point, the lighting, I'm gonna do Rembrandt lining today, I got my lights set up. Yeah. Okay, greet the subject, sit down. Okay, everybody's perfect, you ready? Okay, everybody ready? Let's take a shot. Boom, you take a shot, right? And yeah. then adjust a little, I think that was good, but smile a little more for the next one. Right. Boom, yeah. take another shot. With digital, it's click, 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 mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. or even like I shoot Panasonic Lumix. With Lumix cameras, you could just roll 6K video wow. and later extract, you know, 10 megapixel frames from it. Yeah, know, yeah, yeah. And yeah. go that way. Does yeah. that, that's, that's what I mean by disconnect. Like, how does that, like, how do you switch modes? I, I like going from, I got to get the shot in this one frame. It's perfect, especially handheld, right? It's going to be perfect. <laughs> Focus is nailed. Everything is perfect in this frame because every time you press that shutter, that's literally a cast register so sound. Yeah. Playing, right? No, that's money. Versus, it's literal money. <laughs> right. Versus just click. It means nothing. Just I could hold it down all day until I fill up my memory card, get thousands of images. I'm going to pay the same thing. Right. Yeah. How, do you, how do you manage that the, between the two? Yeah, it's again, it's that discipline because like yeah. sometimes I'll shoot with uh, with like on sets with other people. So like sometimes I'm, I'm working with a stylist or a makeup artist or, you know, someone who's working with hair. And so I can be shooting digital and just be so focused on trying to get the shot right. And then the other person's like, oh, wait a minute, let me fix something on your jacket. Let me fix something on your blah, blah, blah. And so when I'm shooting digital, that's not the first thing I'm looking at. I just want to make sure the shot's right. But with film, it's like, wait a minute, make sure that is here. Make sure this is not in the frame. Like, it's like, I have to be a little bit more meticulous. So it's like, I'm trying to think about like, how can I apply that to my digital uh, photography as well? Because it's like, maybe not every shoot, I'll be able to bring the film, but it's like, if I can adapt a film mindset shooting here, you know, so it's not all like, oh, I'll fix it later, but more so just like, while we're here, we got what we we wanted to get. We got the best that we wanted to do. So it's like, applying that mindset to even with the flexibility to do whatever you want still having a discipline about it like this is this is what we came for you know like this yeah. is what we came to do and we accomplished it here and then what i do after will only elevate it not like you know like oh man we missed so much like and it happens right. sometimes we all have our bad days but it's like you know still wanting to like apply a certain level of like okay we got it here like let's yeah. worry about the rest later <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's so interesting. I'd I'd love to see you shoot one day because that that is a it's so fascinating to me how you have to be so considered with each frame, right? Yeah. And especially if you're handheld. It like back in the day, you know these these giant monolithic photographers like Annie Leibovitz and you know those yeah. people they were shooting. I don't know if she still shoots it, but she's shooting medium format, mm -hmm. and and it was. You know, of course, they had the crew around them to make sure, and the support crew to make sure everything went down. But then, like we were saying, every shot is a is a cash register, and the budget to the client mm -hmm. had to include a certain amount of film in there. You yep. know, so it's not like okay, whatever, we're just going to shoot until we get it. It's like okay, we got five rolls, you know, yeah. to get this on. I would imagine I've never been in that situation. <laughs> uh, but you know, here, like overlapping the old world and the new world, one of the things that I think about all the time, even, even as late as today, mm. is the magic of being able to change your ISO. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have that, which you can Can't appreciate shooting medium format. You can, you put ISO 100 oh, in there or 200. <laughs> you, that's what you're shooting until that roll yeah. is over. You can't even switch rolls. It's, yeah. well, that's what you're going to shoot until you're done. Digital, I could roll that thing all the way up to 25,000, 200, yeah. whatever, you know, yeah. and still get a decent image out of there. That's another constraint, right? And which it sounds like you enjoy that, that constraint of, okay, I got this film in here. I got to get it right with 
with an f-stop and shutter speed combination because iso i don't have that leg of the tripod <laughs> right? yeah I, I think it's just a it's a way to challenge myself like i think about i think about kobe or, or michael jordan you know just to go into the sports world a little bit and just like how they wanted to push themselves and challenge themselves to do more or like uh even like in the music world like a favorite artist of mine is prince right he would play every instrument himself or like yeah. you know just like pushing himself so it's just like okay i have the technology i can shoot on my i can do photo shoot with my iphone and it's perfect but like you know what can i do to even just challenge myself even more i think that's all it is it's like you know it's not that i don't want ease and comfort like i, I do love it it's great but it's like if i can push myself a little bit more to get technically better why not yeah yeah that's so good <laughs> that is so good yeah yeah but then the the world has evolved right so yeah you could have medium formats <laughs> in the digital camera yeah now, exactly you know with the, the fuji what worlds. is the fuji gfx 100s was just released a couple weeks ago okay that crazy beast it's only six grand but it's oh, a, only yeah yeah grand. yeah <laughs> yeah without the lens uh but that that is a uh it's a it's a full frame camera which plays in the medium format space yeah. kind of Right. So yeah, yeah, really, really interesting. Well, <laughs> Kurt, as we as we wind this down, yeah, um, I want to just kind of bring it full circle. We started with discussion about how you got started in photography that you know, you were telling telling us about your the, your parental your dad's influence mm -hmm. he wasn't a photographer, but you know, he was shooting all the time and kind of you got struck by lightning. And now you're <laughs> now you're a photographer. Yeah. What does the future look like for you? You know, so we're, yeah. we're as we record this, we're in March of 2021. Mm. What does if you look back on this video and you watch Ooh. this video in 2023 or four, what do you hope that you've accomplished between then and now? Man, I, I, I want to watch back just thinking, uh, if only he knew what was next. <laughs> like, you know, like, this is just the start. This is just the beginning, like the first yeah. interview, the first opportunity to speak with you, the first uh, episode of this, this series, like, you know, it, I, I think I always love that moment of just like, uh, if only I knew what would happen next. But like, I, you know, it, it's just always about expansion. I think for me, I'm always thinking about expansion, you know, wanting to get better, you know, on a technical level, like I said, <laughs> but on just just what, really finding what uh, what's calling to me as a photographer, you know, like, mm -hmm. um, and just as, as an artist and a creative person, period, just like, what do I feel drawn to? And like, how can I best tell those stories and best portray that visually? And I feel like, those things will lead to all the like, you know, accomplishments, the technical accomplishments in the world, but just like being really clear on what my vision is and being clear on the stories that I, that I wanted to tell. Like, I always want to look back and say like, okay, this is definitely work I can stand by. Like if no matter what year this is, I would, I would do it again, or I would do it, you know, with just that same approach. So I think, expanding on what I already have and what I already know and, and what I already do. Um, but just with more clear vision, with more, with, you know, just more opportunities to create with more support, with more things like that, with more people to share with. Um, it's growth. That's yeah, just that's just what I hope for. Yeah, I love that. I love that. <laughs> cool. So if if uh, here's, here's a last zinger question before we go to the, the URL stuff. Sure something happens you lose all your gear you lose your oh, computer Knock on wood. you know <laughs> and you got to start from scratch but here here's the twist here's a twist yeah. there's you know insurance covers everything and okay. you, can start, you can start again fresh yeah. with you know with everything new what what camera lens combination would you start with and you can only buy one to start Right, you could get you get one camera and one lens and you and one computer. You get back to work. How would you how would you recover from that from that setback? Oh man, you've made you made it impossible. Okay, <laughs> um, <laughs> I would Thank really hope uh, possible questions. <laughs> I would really hope this doesn't happen. Um, yeah. Right, let's not go wood. No, I think you know. I would just start with um, 
you know, like I just showed you my my Nifty Fifty, right? Like that's yeah. the one thing I've been using. So you would rebuy that? I would get that again. I I think, I you know, I I want other lenses, of course, but like, you know, um, in terms of camera, I like. I like shooting with this RP. Um, I like shooting because it's like I'm coming from using the the marks. The, the I start my I started out with a Canon T3i, then I went to a 5D, and so shooting with Canon has just felt natural to me. So like I I'd, I'd go with that again. Um, Very cool. But it's like if I'm like yo, if you got any little, if you got extra budget for film, uh, you know, just let me know. You know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's, that's so awesome and that's the minimalist right it's not yeah. not so much minimalist it's just more of the the true artist i know what kind of paintbrush i like using yeah i want to get that paintbrush again you know yeah. yes there's other paintbrushes that are arguably better but you know like full this metal jacket yeah. this is this is you know there are many like it but this one is mine right? exactly <laughs> this is what I exactly do. yeah very cool so so kurt let's let's wrap it up and yeah. if, if folks want to reach out to you and connect with you or look at some of your work online, what's the what's the best location for them to go? Yeah, um, my website is KurtSaunders.com, my my full name. My Instagram name is different. It's it's at Cosmic Insanity. Um, Cosmic Insanity. <laughs> that's my Instagram name. <laughs> nice. Um, so you can reach me there. Uh, I'm definitely always open to receiving messages and sharing and talking with people so yeah if, to anyone who who's watched this please feel free to reach out um those are the ways and i'm on twitter as well at cosmic insanity one so there's that <laughs> cosmic insanity can can i ask the the, the obvious question what's the yeah. story behind cosmic insanity <laughs> yeah it, uh <laughs> i used to i used to write poetry in high school um so that was the name of one of my poems and uh it just stuck um to be honest i would like to have my real name on my instagram but someone has it so it's yeah. like uh all right but um that's the people best, next best. people know me as cosmic insanity i guess so it's like yeah i guess i'll keep the name for now <laughs> yeah i think i think of, i think cosmic insanity and i think like that was that was thanos's nickname <laughs> ah yes <laughs> From Marvel, right there. <laughs> that's Love that's it. actually what that was. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thank you, Kurt, for for doing this. I appreciate your time today. This is it's uh, been fantastic. You. I feel like we could talk for another hour. Yeah, uh, me too. I have a list of questions that I even get to. I think I got like through the first, you know, eighth of my questions to ask. I'm you, down so. to do this again, like not recorded or what, or recorded again. Like, hey, I'm absolutely. I'm yeah. Cool. Cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So maybe we'll invite you on my my other show this week in photo. We'll do a, oh, I'm we'll down. Do an episode over there. Okay. I'm down. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, you heard it. If you want to reach out, when we'll put the we'll put the links to um to all of Kurt's kind of presences online in the post for this episode. But yeah, reach out. You know, ask him more questions about cosmic insanity. You know about. <laughs> shooting with medium format and, and all that stuff just direct your questions over there kurt saunders thank you so much for coming on man for this inaugural episode of oh, the man. pixel punisher show it's a pleasure chatting with you thank you frederick it's been a pleasure awesome likewise yeah, okay likewise. take care and you have take a good, care. good rest of your day have a good one okay bye everybody take care <laughs>